Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and clearly we've got some more algebra going on. Um, let's go ahead and read the directions. The directions say solve the inequality below for y. So um, I would remind you that if someone tells me to solve for y, they're telling me to get y alone. On its side, now I usually say um, on its side of the equation, but we don't have an equation this time. We have an inequality, but that's okay. The rules of equations and inequalities are almost identical. Every rule that you use for solving equations will work with inequalities as well. There's just one little new thing you have to learn about inequalities, and we will deal with that as we come to it in this problem. Now, that being said, I also recognize that there's more than one way to solve this. If you know the fraction trick, more power to you. But because a lot of GED students struggle with fractions, I'm actually going to solve this problem um, one step at a time. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, So I've been told to get y alone on its side of the inequality sign. There's the inequality sign. So you can see that currently y is not alone. It's got this negative 2 shoved up against it. Remember that when a number is shoved up against a letter, it's multiplying. So it's got this negative 2 multiplying it. And then this whole expression, negative 2y, is all over 3. And remember, one way to think about fractions is that it's dividing. So that whole thing is dividing by 3. So, whether or not you know anything about fractions, I bet you know something about multiplying and dividing. And that's what we'll use to solve this equa or this inequality. Okay? So, the first thing I will do is I will get rid of this divided by 3 by doing the opposite. You always solve or get rid of something, um, isolate the letter, by um, doing opposite... Um, operations. So what's the opposite of dividing by 3? Of course the opposite of dividing by 3 is multiplying by 3. So I'm going to take this entire left hand side here and multiply it by 3. Now the rule of solving uh, equations and inequalities is I can do whatever I want. I really can when I have an equation or an inequality as long as I do it too both sides. And so I'm going to multiply the entire right hand side by 3 as well. And that will keep my inequality balanced so that the relationship stays the same. So on the left hand side, multiplying by 3 and dividing by 3 will cancel, leaving me with just negative 2y. I've done nothing that would affect my inequality sign. And on the right hand side, 10 times 3 is 30. Great. So I'm almost done. Y is almost alone. Uh, I, but I need to get rid of it. Now, a lot of students do this the wrong way, the wrong way. They say, hey, look, that's a minus 2. And the opposite of minus 2 is add 2. But those students are wrong because even though that is a negative 2, it has a negative out front, that 2 is not minusing with the y. Remember what we said, when a number is shoved up against a letter like that with nothing in between them, they must be multiplying. So this negative 2 is multiplying by this y. So the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So I am going to divide. And what am I going to divide by? Exactly the number I want to get rid of. I want to do the opposite of multiplying by negative 2, so I will divide by negative 2. Now the rule of solving, uh, the rule of equations and inequalities is that I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. But you need to know something. And here is an important point. This is the thing to write down. Um, <clears throat> when I multiply or divide both sides of an equation by a negative sign, and you can see I did that here, I divided both sides by a negative, any negative number, it's going to negate both sides of the inequality here. And anytime that happens, what it's going to end up doing is flipping the relationship. If the left-hand side was bigger, it'll make the left-hand side smaller. If the left-hand side was smaller, it'll make the left-hand side bigger. By multiplying or dividing both sides of my equation by a negative, I actually change the relationship. And so you have got to remember this rule. When multiplying or dividing by a negative, flip the inequality sign.
I changed the relationship here when I did this action. So it's going to be important that in my next line of the inequality, it reflects that. So let's take a look at what I mean. On the left hand side, negative 2 multiplying and a negative 2 dividing cancel so that my y is alone. Now here, originally my left hand side was greater than or equal to my right hand side, but since I divided both sides of the inequality by a negative, I actually flipped that relationship around. Negating flips the inequality sign. And so notice, this turned from a greater than or equal to sign into a less than or equal to sign. And there's the math to do on the right hand side. 30 divided by negative 2 is negative 15. So that is my final answer. Y is alone, so I know I'm done. My final answer is Y is less than or equal to negative 15. Here my final answer is written as an inequality. They could also ask you on the GED to write your final answer or graph your final answer on a number line. If I wanted to graph this on a number line, I would have to make sure that I was looking at a part of my number line that had negative 15 on it. So there's negative 15 there. I would put a closed dot because I have the equal sign under my less than sign. Because I have an equal sign, I use a closed dot. And I'm going to go off to the left. See how the arrow points left? The y is less than negative 15, so it'll be somewhere left of negative 15 on the number line. So there is my answer in a graph. That's a graph of the solution. Beautiful. Okay, so two possible answers, two possible correct answers to this same um, inequality. They both say the same thing, just in different ways. If you have any questions about this problem, make sure that you drop them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them.